shipping. Uh, you're going to be hearing from Commissioner Peter Steinbrook, Commissioner John McCarthy, and uh, NWSA, Northwest Seaport Alliance uh, CEO, John Wolf. And certainly any questions you have, but we'll be uh, happy to take, either put them in writing or just raise your hand um, uh, and we'll call on you. And then certainly if you've got any follow-up questions, we can make uh, any of the folks here uh, available for you and then get an answer for you then as soon as possible. And it's certainly uh, uh, perfectly fine for any of you members of the media to record this as well. And so uh, without any further uh, delay, uh, I'm happy to introduce um, Port of Seattle Commission President and Managing Member of the Northwest Seaport Alliance, Commissioner Peter Steinbrook. Well, good morning, friends, Peter, colleagues, and media uh, members. Uh, happy to be here today. Uh, what's on the top of my mind these days on behalf of the Northwest Seaport Alliance and Port of Seattle Home Port uh, the really big issue uh, that is coming up here for a decision point is uh, the issue of the future of the West Seattle Bridge and its repair or, in place or, or replacement and what the best pass, path forward would be. The mayor organized a community task force around uh, this issue and also has a technical advisory panel and a host of engineers and consultants and is expected to make a decision by the end of October on which, uh, which, which path is the best. Um, from our standpoint at the Seaport Alliance, the impacts to this critical transportation hub highlight our maritime economy's vital dependency on the freight access, free movement of people, goods, and vehicles through the busiest maritime freight hub in the state. Reliance on this freight movement supports tens of thousands of jobs along the Duwamish, the manufacturing industrial center of the Duwamish, and across Harbor Island, as well as the critical supply chain, as we know, to, our, to the state of Alaska and Hawaii. So we very much appreciate Mayor, Mayor Durkin's leadership in organizing uh, this uh, stakeholder engagement process. We are actively involved with that. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, coming to a decision soon on which direction to go with regard to the options that are being studied right now and how we will prioritize and ensure that freight, transit, emergency vehicles continue to be prioritized on the lower Spokane Br Street Bridge and that the city continue to enforce that in the interim time in which uh, repairs or replacement uh, are being made with the, with the upper bridge. So the, I can't emphasize enough how important the lower bridge is uh, to freight access and with Terminal 5 about to and undergoing the modernization, uh, expected to, to be up and running next year, we absolutely have to have certainty that ensures the level of access necessary to support uh, what will be one of the premier uh, cargo terminals on the West Coast. So with that, we, um, I'll turn it over to my co-chair and colleague, John McCarthy, with uh, the Tacoma Home Port and uh, co-chair of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Uh, thank you, uh, Peter. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Northwest Seaport Alliance, uh, we really welcome you to this call. It's been some time uh, since we last spoke with you. Uh, this year has been an interesting and challenging year for everyone in society, but uh, for the port industry, uh, particularly, I think, to some extent. I mean, it really follows two years of uh, trade wars uh, with China, tariff uh, issues and increases which have impacted our trade. And then, of course, we've all spent the last uh, spring and summer, summer uh, following new warnings, such as social distancing, washing on our hands, wearing a face covering. And then, of course, the devastating wildfires on uh, recent weeks in the West Coast uh, have uh, forced all of us to stay home and, and we're following new warnings. Keep your windows closed and your doors shut. Um, in addition to that, over Labor Day, uh, we had a windstorm and we had a barge with a huge crane from SSA that was moving uh, to be uh, located in Tacoma. We had the barge break loose and move quite a distance and end up uh, striking the Katie Downs restaurant 
on Ruston Way. But having said all of those uh, things, we are resilient and we will overcome these difficult uh, times and issues. Uh, as our nation uh, recovers from the economic fallout, the Northwest Seaport Alliance is absolutely committed uh, to keeping cargo flowing efficiently and safely, safely through our gateway and uh, doing our part to keep the supply chain working as it should. Uh, we're also going to do our part to keep people employed, to keep the economy churning uh, through strong export and import uh, activities throughout our facilities. Uh, I'd now like uh, John Wolf, if you would, to go ahead and give us a report for the day. Okay, thank you, Commissioner McCarthy and Commissioner Steinbrook. Uh, this is John Wolf, CEO of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Uh, welcome all of you. Uh, building off of what the commissioner shared, uh, the Northwest Seaport Alliance Gateway remains open and operational uh, during these uh, difficult times, both with the, the health crisis and also uh, our, our uh, wildfires here in the state and the impact of the wildfires to our air quality even down the coast. Uh, we've been able to maintain a uh, a healthy and safe environment for our workforce to continue to operate. We really appreciate our our labor partners and uh, all of those folks that are out on the job each and every day during these challenging times. Uh, so that that is working really well within our gateway. Um, our, our cargo volumes uh, for the month of August uh, have been better than uh, the past months, yet not where we'd like to see them. And uh, we're encouraged by the fact that uh, with our container volumes, uh, we saw uh, about uh, a 13 percent uh, decrease over uh, last year, August, yet as compared to the previous months where we've seen an average of closer to 20 percent drop over previous year, that's encouraging news. So uh, year to date, that still keeps uh, holds us at about 17 and a half percent down uh, over last year, uh, year to date August for the container volume. Uh, part of the uh, reason for the uptick in August is that we are entering what we call peak season within the industry, and and that is when the uh, the importers, the cargo owners, the retailers are um, starting to move uh, cargo in to uh, prepare for the holiday season, the upcoming holiday season. And so uh, we expect that uh, as we look uh, into the months of September, October, uh, that we're going to have stronger volumes uh, in the next two to three months. And then typically uh, that volume uh, drops off at the end of the year and uh, into the first quarter of uh, 2021. So uh, the other indicator that we're watching closely is the number of blank sailings uh, or canceled vessel sailings. And the encouraging news there is that uh, looking out into the next couple of months, we have no scheduled blank sailings or canceled sailings. And so that's another positive indicator that we should have stronger container volumes uh, coming here in September, October. We can see that even today with the uh, activity at each of our international container terminals in both the Seattle Tacoma Harbor, where uh, they are experiencing uh, higher volumes uh, the first couple of weeks of September. So again, encouraging news. Shifting to the non-containerized cargoes, our, uh, our break bulk cargo uh, tonnage is holding uh, pretty uh, flat compared to last year, which is encouraging given all of the economic challenges. So we've done fairly well there and really uh, appreciate the partnership with our non-containerized break bulk customers uh, that uh, provide a diversity of that cargo mix within our gateway. And then shifting to auto imports, uh, we have a healthy – um, auto business uh, activity here within the gateway. We are, uh, again, experiencing quite a drop over previous year 
uh, upwards of 30% uh, drop year to date over last year. And that's really just driven by the economic conditions and that um, folks are um, spending less in terms of that discretionary spend in, in automobiles. So we're hoping that as the economy recovers, we'll see better times and, and more volume on the uh, with the autos. Uh, also just wanted to highlight uh, the Mercator study that was uh, released a week or two ago. Uh, this was a study that uh, actually was performed a number of years ago uh, that assessed the competitive aspects of the U.S. West Coast ports as compared to the Canadian gateways to the north of us and uh, Mexico uh, to the south. And also uh, we'll report out on the Gulf and East Coast ports. And uh, the, the main takeaway, something that we really have known for some time is that uh, we do uh, very well on service delivery. Uh, we compete uh, and uh, stack up against the competition very well when we measure ourselves on um, those metrics of uh, service delivery for our customers, uh, speed to market, those types of things. Uh, where we have challenge and where we continue to focus our energy is on the price point of uh, moving cargo through our gateway as compared to uh, the Canadian Gateway. And so that continues to be a challenge for us and where we need to continue to put strong focus on looking for ways to offset some of those uh, costs of moving cargo through our gateway so that we can maintain our market share and hopefully grow our market share uh, into the future. So with that, um, I'll turn it back to uh, Akiko, Peter, and uh, see if there's any questions. All right, folks, uh, we're uh, going to just open the floor here. Um, either uh, 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 give us a question here in writing or um, uh, just go ahead and uh, feel free. It looks like Carolyn Adolph of KUOW has a question. Thank you very much, Peter. The question is, you know, you've spent some time at the beginning talking about the West Seattle Bridge. and basically saying, we really hope that the lower bridge continues to be for freight. We really, really need it. But is there, is there any challenge to that? Is there anyone saying that more uh, regular passenger vehicles should be on the lower bridge? My, is my mic on here? Yes, it is. Yeah, there, there is challenge to that. Uh, yes, there's tension there. Uh, the, the lower bridge can, can, not come close to accommodating the capacity loss of the upper bridge. I think we're somewhere around 40% below, you know, the ultimate capacity. And from that standpoint, it's absolutely essential that the traffic on the lower bridge be prioritized to essential vehicles, freight access, uh, and transit. And uh, the city has an allocation process that they have work through with community members, uh, as well as our industrial maritime stakeholders uh, that allows, uh, you know, the limited number of passes basically, and it's gonna be enforced through electronic uh, enforcement mechanism that's gonna be put in place. So that's the reality there. Um, in the interim period, before we can get the upper bridge uh, back into serviceable condition, which could be, who knows, a couple of years at best, um, there, we're gonna have to look to all other modes, uh, including telecommuting and uh, water taxis and other, other means for people to get between uh, West Seattle and uh, uh, other points uh, that relied on that West High Bridge. And there's, you know, there's over 100,000 people living in West Seattle and many, many businesses uh, that uh, depend on, you know, the, the mobility. So it is a huge challenging problem. I'm not going to, uh, I'm, I'm not going to belittle it in any way. If, if I could just pipe in for a second, uh, uh, speaking as a commissioner from Tacoma, 
I really need to reiterate that that bridge is uh, of regional significance and, and perhaps more than that. We're the fourth largest gateway in the United States, Seattle and Tacoma. Uh, we saw a great article in the newspaper yesterday from uh, somebody from the agricultural community and someone from the shipping community talking about the importance of our international uh, terminals uh, for the region but the, and the nation. Uh, so that bridge serves uh, as a conduit for the entire United States and as an employment base you know we have tremendous number of people whose lives depend on being able to work at the terminals and facilities that the bridge serves. So we're really pleased to see that the mayor has recognized the uh, national and regional significance of that bridge in, in putting the restrictions in place that she has. Um, uh, 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 Carolyn, before we get to your follow-up, um, uh, Didi from Cairo 7 has a question. Didi? Great, yeah. Uh, my question is about cargo volumes. And I'm wondering, um, so you mentioned that automobile cargo volumes is down internationally uh, because of consumer spending and the lack of discretionary spending from consumers. Is that also still what's impacting the lower cargo volumes in general? Or is that due to some other reason? For instance, I know in the beginning of the uh, pandemic, it was because of China and factories in China shut down and that impacted some of the incoming shipments. What is it that's causing consumer or what is it that's causing cargo volumes to be down overall? Yeah, uh, this is John Wolf again. Uh, great question. The um, it, it's been interesting early on uh, with the uh, the combination of the uh, tariff issues between uh, the U.S. and China, uh, combined with and the global pandemic, we were seeing uh, far less consumer demand. People were holding on to uh, their money pretty tightly uh, early in the year. What we're experiencing in the last uh, month or two, and, and we expect to continue for the next couple of months, is a combination of things that is driving higher imports um, through uh, from Asia, and particularly China, to the U.S. Uh, the first is that uh, I think people are uh, have adjusted a little bit to the new norms and um, and folks that may have been holding discretionary spending for um, vacations trips like that are spending more money on uh, at home on house projects home projects things of that nature and those types of proje uh, projects and and supplies often are sourced from Asia so we're seeing uh, quite a demand and uh, growth of the consumer spending in that way. Um, combined with, uh, again, uh, what I mentioned earlier, which is uh, a typical uptick in volume of imports uh, starting, you know, in August and, and continuing through at least October, early November with what we refer to as peak season in preparation for the holidays. So, uh, in general, we're seeing uh, higher import volumes, uh, and we're uh, in, in Seattle Tacoma experiencing some of that. Although uh, I will say, as we compare our volumes um, and the increase in volumes that we've experienced in the last month or two, as compared to say Southern California, um, our uh, our volume increase hasn't been as substantial as Southern California. And part of the reason for that is uh, the huge consumer market that exists in Southern California in the San Pedro Bay area as compared to uh, our uh, Seattle, Tacoma and broader region. Okay, uh, it looks like uh, uh, Carolyn, uh, you had a follow up question and then uh, Debbie Cockrell, the TNT yeah. will uh, do you after that. I think Catherine Long also had a question. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Catherine Long's question is essentially my own. So okay. go for it. There, the answer, the, the question is written out. Do we want to read the question so everyone hears? Uh, Here, yes. Sure. Okay. I mean, I'll do it. I mean, the uh, Catherine, do you want to do it yourself? Uh, she's got a mic problem, Carolyn. Oh, right, why don't you go ahead? Okay, so this is new that to to me 
that SDOT wants to issue electronic passages, uh, passes to use the low bridge. When did that come out? And also, could you paint us a picture of what effect on shipping that what the effect on shipping would be if the lower bridge is, you know, is is restricted to uh, restricts freight in any way? I'm trying to imagine would there be a quota on how many freight trucks would go over the bridge in the day in a day, and would that quota flex? Yeah. Well, first of all, the electronic uh, enforcement has been uh, discussed for some time and it, it's tied to the issuance uh, uh, of these permits, as I mentioned, that they have a limited number available. And uh, they're also, they will also be opening, maintaining the bridge open for general traffic after hours, after our freight hours, which I think is between 9 p.m. and, and uh, 5 a.m. in the morning, something like that. Uh, when there will not be the controls. But um, I, ha I have to underscore that if anything should happen to the lower bridge, and if we are not provided this freight prioritization, it could be disastrous uh, to our gateway uh, at T5, uh, which is scheduled to, to reopen uh, for business fully within, I, John, you can correct me, a year's time or so, we have limited time. And also I would point out that uh, the typical vo traffic volumes that pre predated COVID have not resumed yet. So that would be considerably added pressure on the lower bridge um, when people start to go back to work in larger numbers. Uh, so these, these are no small challenges, uh, and we're, we're really uh, grateful for SDOT's careful uh, mitigation, traffic mitigation management during this interim period. If I can just add something to that, because that's a good question, to try to paint a picture. Uh, the Northwest Seaport Alliance is only five years old, and this, uh, this uh, terminal that we're developing, Terminal 5, is the largest investment by the combined ports of Seattle and Tacoma in the history and to create this international terminal. Uh, and um, the uh, development of that terminal, uh, we're working with shipping lines and we're working with uh, maritime operators who are trying to attract shipping lines to Terminal 5 uh, to use this huge international facility once it's built. So it's kind of a critical juncture while, uh, while customers are looking at making long-term uh, commitment to the Pacific Northwest and to the Terminal 5 area, uh, they certainly you know, are aware of and want to be assured uh, that they're going to, in essence, buy into a facility that's going to be completely operational for their needs. Okay, it looks like uh, 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 Debbie Cockrell, the TNT, if you have a question. Yes, hi. Um, I'm curious if there's any uh, estimates yet on the amount of monetary damage that Crane caused when it broke loose and any other updates on that situation. And is that Crane back in service? Um, so this is John Wolf. I'm happy to answer that question. Um, we do not have uh, an estimate of the monetary damage as of yet. And I want to make sure everyone understands that the, uh, the crane is, is owned by SSA terminals, not the Seaport Alliance. Um, and the barge company uh, that transported that crane from Seattle to Tacoma uh, was hired by uh, SSA terminals, not by the Northwest Seaport Alliance. So we were not uh, responsible for that operation and we don't own that crane. So therefore we have no liability associated with any damage that occurred. Certainly we, we, we were concerned about it and uh, engaged uh, with the customer to help manage that situation. So their insurance company is handling that uh, with the affected parties. And um, the crane is back um, at the terminal. It is. Uh, it has been offloaded onto the terminal. Um, I don't believe that that specific crane is operational yet. It usually takes a few weeks to 
um, once the crane has been uh, moved to the terminal to get it up and running. Maybe I can, for those of you that might not be aware of the full details of that, as John mentioned, it was about uh, 10 p.m. on Labor Day that it broke loose. And then uh, because of the wind, it was pushed uh, to the west and ended up along Ruskin Way, striking the Katy Downs uh, and also striking the shoreline over there. Uh, there is damage to the Katy Downs uh, restaurant. Uh, fortunately, uh, no one was, was injured and we're very pleased to hear that. Um, but that perhaps for those of you that didn't know, that's a little bit more detail on, on what happened. And I will tell you, Katy Downs serves great pizza and, um, uh, uh, and the crane was not on a pizza delivery effort, by the way, just if I can pose a little bit of humor to that situation. But uh, we're glad no one was injured and we're, we're glad it's be, gonna be resolved. Okay, great. Uh, uh, commissioners, John, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, it looks like, uh, Carolyn, you have a follow-up here that, um, uh, whether there, the fear is that one, that the lower bridge will be so heavily used, uh, if anything should happen to that bridge, that it will be functionally lost, or two, whether freight traffic will be curtailed by measures to protect the use of the bridge, or both. Uh, could you be a little clearer? And are you essentially up against political pressure from West Seattle residents or some other constituency? And uh, Carolyn, feel free to jump in if you needed to clarify any part of that question. Uh, let me unpack that a little bit. Um, with regard to political pressure, I think the mayor is under the most political pressure here from the various uh, stakeholder interests, but we are take, intentionally taking a very collaborative approach. Uh, there, are, there are divergent interests and expectations about what level of service capacity should be provided to all the various stakeholders. Uh, but we are determined to ensure that freight is prioritized. We have no other options. We have no other way to get to, uh, you know, any uh, reasonable way to get to Terminal 5 when it opens for international cargo next spring. And as my co-chair John McCarthy said, this is not just a local issue. And if there's one thing that we could reinforce from the seaports perspective is the, the, that this is critical infrastructure that uh, we are entirely dependent on uh, its uh, ab ability to, to provide the mobility and access that we need. It's state, local, it's regional, and it's national because we have goods also um, exporting to international destinations through our gateway that come from not just uh, Eastern Washington, but from the Midwest. And um, there are alternatives uh, for other, other uh, types of travelers and general traffic, uh, but it is a, a, a extremely critical need that um, we will be closely watching the management of the lower bridge. And there were some recent repairs made to that bridge as well. Uh, it had some issues that I, I think have been resolved now. Uh, but uh, yeah, so th it is, you know, it is a challenging uh, thing to manage here and politically as well, because there are multiple stakeholders, but we're, we're right there in the middle of it and determined to ensure that we can open that gateway when the modernization work is completed next spring. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> folks, that, that kind of concludes our time uh, for uh, today's um, uh, media availability. Um, thank you all for joining us. And of course, if you've got any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to Akiko or I, and we'll be more than happy to get you some, uh, some answers or uh, some further uh, follow-up on there. Thank you very much.